Hi, my name is Darren Saravis, and I'm the CEO and founder of a product development group here in Long Beach called Nectar. And I'm also an artist, and I'm definitely, I'm a polluter. <laughs> So, in 2009, I flew to China to visit some of the factories that my company works with, and the cities were choked with smog. I knew that with every product I developed that I was contributing to this pollution. At the end of this trip, I feel, felt like I needed a change of perspective. So, I took an overnight trip, or an overnight hike, to the top of Taishan, one of China's five sacred mountains. I climbed 7,000 steps to the summit. I made the climb with thousands of other people that night, and when I reached the top at 5 a.m., the sun came up, and everybody went wild. Thousands of people just started cheering. And I knew at that moment that I needed to somehow give back and to, <clears throat> excuse me, to balance out the harm that I do. So I returned to Nectar with the mission to create something that would help make the world a better place. And our inspiration came once again from the sun. So if we look at a bird's eye view of an average city and isolate one square mile, let's look at all of the available surfaces that receive the sun. We have the rooftops shown in green, and many of those have solar panels on them. Then we have the sides of buildings, and there's solutions uh, that are being worked on there. And we have the surfaces on the ground, but no solutions exist today. So let's say 10% of that ground space is available for solar power, and that's shown in green. And then we were to use 10% of that area, so that's 1% of the total area, we can generate enough energy to power 700 homes in that one square mile. But current support structures for solar panels look like this. And if we were to install this in, say, the middle of Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica, <laughs> the public wouldn't accept an industrial eyesore but they will accept a giant bean like this sculpture by Anish Kapoor in Millennium Park. By combining art and technology, we can bring solar power into public spaces. We called it solar flora. We used art as a subversion to place solar power in plain sight. We can put a power plant in the middle of downtown. So we wanted to connect technology to nature, and use nature to shape the technology. Like a plant, the solar flora draws energy from, from the sun and converts it into energy for life. And this is what a power plant should be. Let's talk about some of the capabilities of the solar flora. So the solar flora will light up from dusk till midnight and it will continuously monitor its power budget to make sure that there is always enough power to light up at night. It can rotate to follow the sun to boost the energy output by about 25%. Then from noon till 8 o'clock at night, it will provide enough power to charge several dozen laptops, or two segways continuously, or hundreds of cell phones per day. We envision placing the solar flora in universities as a communal gathering place for students to charge their cell phones or to gather around with their laptops. We can see the solar flora in, the, in city streets charging segways and electric bicycles or configured as cell phone towers. We can see groves of solar flora in parks powering lights and fountains. When we conceived of the solar flora, we saw it as a form, an artistic vision, and a symbol, as a message that sustainability can, can be beautiful, but the solar flora is more than art. It has to satisfy a host of performance and safety requirements. For example, it has to withstand lightning, 
wind, rain, snow, dust, and earthquakes. And from a pure engineering perspective, an ideal structure might look like this. It would consist of straight pieces. The joints would adjust to aim at the sun. All the solar panels would be in plane to eliminate cast shadows. And we would run all the wiring and electronics on the outside in conduits and boxes. And you can see from this engineer's vision that this is all completely opposite of an artistic vision. Now, the typical equation for solar power is to reduce the cost per kilowatt as much as possible. And this artistic approach has a higher cost per kilowatt, but it brings power into a place that it otherwise might not be. And we think that this is a net gain. So we work closely with local factories to figure out how to mass produce it sustainably. And in this way, we're able to minimize the carbon output of the manufacturing process while also supporting our local Long Beach economy. And we had our engineers um, use computer simulation to optimize the strength. Then we built prototypes, and we towed it behind our car at 80 miles per hour at El Mirage Dry Lake Bed <laughs> for wind testing. Then after passing our testing, we built our first solar flora, and we brought it to a local beach in August of 2010. Then in September of 2010, we brought it to Burning Man in Black Rock, Nevada. <laughs> And, and we were able to test it in, in very severe conditions, like dust storms, rain, and high winds. And there's me in the gas mask and the pink shorts. <laughs> and here's the solar flora at night out on the playa. Then we brought it to Pershing Square Autumn Lights Festival in downtown Los Angeles, where we integrated the solar flora into a multimedia performance. Back home in Long Beach, we worked with the Redevelopment Agency. And at the beginning of this year, they helped us to find a home for it in front of the Long Beach Convention Center. So we planted the first seedling. And there's many ways that this idea of combining art with solar power can grow. The power could be increased. Or it could take new forms. For example, we can enlarge the scale to charge electric vehicles. Or it can take on new plant forms. Or solar panels can be combined with other forms of outdoor art. I've learned that we can generate electricity and activism at the same time. And with solar flora, I feel like we planted the first seed. Now I'd like to toss these seeds into the wind, and I hope they'll spread. Thank you very much.